From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is a Cube Conversation, digging in with Ken Sando, uh, talking about what they're doing to help people, uh, really bringing some of the networking ideals uh, to cloud native environments, both you know, in the clouds, in the data centers. Happy to welcome to the program, Krishna Dodapeni. He is the Vice President of Software with Pinsando. Krishna, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Stu, for talking to me. All right, so, so Krishna, the Pinsando team, uh, you know, very well known in the industry, uh, you know, innovation, startup, uh, especially in the networking world. Uh, give us a little bit about your background specifically, uh, how long you've been part of this team, and uh, you know, what helped uh, you know, you and the team, you know, start and Sondo. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm VP of software in Pensando. Uh, before Pensando, uh, before founding Pensando, I worked in a few startups uh, in CMA networks, uh, Neo Systems, and Greenfield networks. All those three startups have been acquired by Cisco. Um, uh, my recent role before this uh, uh, this this company was. Uh, I was VP of engineering in Cisco. Uh, I was responsible for a product called ACI, which is Cisco's uh, flagship SDN product. Um, so, I mean, when, why did we find, uh, found uh, Pensando? So when we were uh, looking at the industry uh, the last uh, few years, right? The few trends that are becoming clear. So obviously we have a lot of enterprise background. We were watching, you know, ACI being deployed in the enterprise data centers. One sore point for customers uh, from operational point of view was installing service devices, network appliances or storage appliances. So not only the operational complexity that these devices bring in, it's also they don't give you the performance uh, and uh, bandwidth uh, and PPS that you expect for traffic, especially from east-west. So that was, one, that was one major issue. And also, if you look at where the intelligence is going, has been the, this has been the trend. It's been going to the edge. The reason for that is the routers or switches or in the devices in the middle they cannot handle the scale. As I mean, the, the bandwidths are growing, the scale is growing, the stateful stuff is going in the network, and the switches and the appliances are not able to handle it. So you need something at the edge, close to the application that can handle uh, uh, this kind of uh, services and bandwidth. And the third thing is obviously, you know, x86, uh, you know, I mean, few years back, you know, every two years, you know, you're getting more transistors. I mean, obviously the Moore's law ended and uh, we know we know how that, that part is going. So the x86 cycles are more valuable and we don't want to use them for all this uh, network services, um, including SDN or, you know, uh, firewalls or load balancers or NVMe virtualization. So looking at all these trends in the industry, you know, we thought there is a good, uh, good opportunity to do a domain-specific processor for I/O and build products around it. I mean, that's how we started Pensando. Yeah. So, so Krishna, it, it's always fascinating to watch. If you look at startups, they are often you know product of the time that they're in and the technologies that are available. You know, sometimes there are ideas that you know it it takes a few times and you know maturation of the technology. And other times, you know, I'll, I'll hear teams and they're like, oh, well, we did this. And then, oh, wow, there was this next new innovation that came out that I wish I had had that when I did this last time. So we do a 2.0 or 3.0 uh, generation. Uh, we've been talking about, you know, distributed architectures for, you know, well over a decade. It's been a long time now. Uh, in many ways, I feel edge computing is just, you know, the latest discussion of this. But when it comes to, you know, you've got software uh, under, under your purview. Um, what are some of the things that are available for Pensando that might not have been, you know, in your toolkit, you know, five years ago? Yeah, so the growth of open source software has been very helpful for us because, you know, we built a scale-out microservices based controller. Right? The last time around when we were building that, you know, we had to build our own consensus algorithm. We had to build our own distributed database for metrics and events and logs. So right now, uh, we, I mean, we have, because of open source thing, we leverage, you know, etcd, Elastic, Influx, and all these open source technologies that you hear. Uh, uh, since we want to leverage the Kubernetes-based ecosystem, you know, that helped us a lot. At the same time, if you think about it, right, the, the even the software, which is not open source, closed source thing, are maturing. Um, I mean, if you talk about SDN, you know, seven, eight years back, 
it was like you know there are n versions of doing of SDN, but now the industry standardized on eVPN, um, which is one of the one of the core pieces of what we do. Uh, we do SDN solution with eVPN. Um, so you know it's more of you know the industry is coming to a place where you know these are the standards and this is the open source software that you could leverage and quickly innovate compared to building all of this from scratch, which will be a big effort for a startup uh, to succeed and build it in time for your customer success. Yeah, and Krishna, you know, you talk about open source, not only in the software, it's in the, the hardware standpoint. I think about things like open compute or the proliferation of, you know, GPUs and PPUs and uh, everything along that. How has that impacted, you know, what, what you've built? So, I mean, it's a good thing you're talking about. For example, we, work, we are working in the future in OCP card, right? You know, it's a good thing that OCP card goes into a HPE server, it goes into a Dell server. Um, uh, so pretty much, you know, we, we want to, I mean, see our goal is to enable this platform uh, that what we built in, you know, all the use cases that customer could think of, right? So in that way, hardware standardization is a good thing uh, for the industry. Um, and then same thing, if you go in how we program the ASIC, right? You know, we are about standards of this P4 programming. Uh, that's an industry uh, consortium, you know, led by a few people. Uh, we want to make sure that, you know, we follow those standards so that for the customer who's coming in, uh, who wants to program it, it's, it's good to have a, a standards-based uh, thing rather than doing something completely proprietary. At the same time, you have to enable innovations and then those innovations, you have to push it back to the open source. That's what we're trying to do with P4. Yeah, excellent. I've had some some real good conversations about P4 um, and, and the way uh, Pensando is, is is leveraging that uh, maybe a little bit differently. And that you know, you talk about standards and open source. Oftentimes, it's like, well, is there differentiate? There there's certain parts of the ecosystem that you say, well, it's kind of been commoditized. Um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously, you're taking a lot of different technologies, putting them together. Uh, help help share the uniqueness of Pensando, what differentiates what you're doing from what was available in the marketplace, or that I couldn't just, you know, cobble together, uh, you know, a bunch of open source hardware and software together. So, I mean, if you look at uh, technologies, right, the, I think the networking that both of us are very familiar with that. If you want to build an SDN solution, or you can take a OBS, or you can use x86 and, you know, or take some merchant silicon and cobble it together. But the problem is you will not get the performance and bandwidth that you're looking for. So let's say you know uh, if you want a high PPS solution or you want a high CPS solution because the number of connections are growing for your IoT use case or 5G use case, right? If you cobble uh, together with an open source thing without any assist uh, from a domain specific processor, your performance will be low. So that is the, I mean, that's one sort of enterprise that in the cloud use case, right? As you know, you're trying to pack as many VMs as containers in one server because you know you get charged. I mean, the customer. Uh, the, our customers make money based on that, right? So you want to offload all of those things uh, into a domain-specific processor that what we built, which we call the DSC, which will, um, which will you know, do all the services at pretty much no cost to x86. I mean, x86, you'll be using zero cycles uh, for doing you know, features like security groups or VPCs or VPN uh, or encryption or storage virtualization, right? That's where our value comes in. I mean, if you count the TCO model using a bunch of x86 cores or you know, a bunch of you know, ARM cores or AMD cores compared to what we do, um, our TCO model works out great for our customers. I mean, that's why you know, there's so much interest in our product. Excellent. I'm, I'm glad, you, glad you brought up customers. Uh, you know, Krishna, one of the challenges I have seen over the years with networking is it tends to be you know, a completely separate language that we speak there. It's you know, a lot of acronyms and protocols and uh, you know, not necessarily accessible to people outside of the silo of networking. I, I think back to you know, SDN, uh, you know, people on the outside would be like, that stands for still does nothing, right? Because it's like <laughs> networking uh, you know, mumbo jumbo there. For people outside of networking, you know, when I think about you know, if I was going to the C-suite of an enterprise customer, um, they don't necessarily care about those networking protocols. They care about the, you know, the business results and the productivity. So how, how do you help explain what Pensando does to those that aren't you know, steeped in the network? So the way I look at it, right? What is customer looking for? Yeah, you're right. I mean, customer doesn't know what end cap you use. Customer is looking for his operational simplicity. And then he wants looking for security. 
right you know and if you look at it sometimes you know both are like in orthogonal if you make it very highly secure but you make it like 10 10000 operational procedure before you deploy a workload that doesn't work for the customer because the operational complexity increases tremendously right so where we are coming in um, is that we want to simplify this for the customer you know there's a very simple way to uh, deploy policies there's a simple way to deploy your networking infrastructure and in the way we do it is we don't care what your physical network is uh, in some sense right so because we are close to the server that's a very good advantage we have we apply the policies before even the packet leaves the server right so in that way he knows his fully secure environment and we and you don't want to manage each one individually we have this uh, product called psm which manages you know all the servers from a central place and it's easy to operationalize a fabric whether you talk about upgrades or you talk about you know uh, deploying new services it's all driven with rest api uh, and you have a gui so you can do it single place and that's where you know a customer's value is rather than talking about as you're talking about end caps or you know exactly the raw throughput that is not the main thing that i mean they wake up every day they wake up every day thinking about it do i have a security risk and you know how easy for me is to deploy new uh you know new services or bring up new data centers all right, Krishna, you're also spanning with your product uh, a few different worlds out there. You know, traditionally, mm -hmm. if I think about, you know, an enterprise data center versus a hyperscale you know, public cloud and edge sites, um, yes. it comes to mind very different skill sets for managing them, you know, different types of de deployments there. Um, if, you know, I understand right, you were going to, you know, play in all of those environments. So talk a little bit about architecturally how you do that and, you know, just, you know, where you sit in, in, in that overall discussion. Yes, so I mean, uh, number one rule inside our company is we, we are driven by customers. And obviously, you know, our customer success is our success. So, but given said that, right, what we try to do is that we try to build a platform that is kind of, you know, programmable, obviously starting from, you know, P4 that we talked about earlier, but it's also from software point of view, it's kind of pluggable, right? So when we build the software, for example, our cloud customers and they use DSC, they use the same set of APIs uh, or gRPC or REST APIs that DSC provides with their controller. But when we ship the same uh, platform to our enterprise customers, we build our own controller and we use the same DSC APIs. So the way we are trying to do is things, there's fully leverage in what we do for enterprise customers and cloud customers. Um, and we don't try to reinvent the wheel, uh, obviously. At the same time, if you look at the highest level constructs from a network perspective, right? Uh, or even storage perspective, what are you trying to do? You're trying to provide connectivity, but you're trying to provide isolation and you're trying to provide security. Uh, so all these constructs, we encapsulated in APIs, uh, which, you know, uh, in some, I mean, some, some mostly like cloud-like APIs, and those APIs are, sim are used for cloud customers and enterprise customers. And the software is built in a way where any layer is, can be removed or any layer can be added, right? Because it's in our interest, we don't want to build multiple different softwares for different customers, right? Then we will not scale. So the idea when we started the software architecture is that how we make it pluggable and how we make it programmable that customer says, I don't want this piece of it. He can put the third party piece on it and still integrate uh, at, a, at a common layer with using REST APIs. Yeah, well, you know, Krishna, you know, I have a little bit of appreciation for some of the hard work that goes through what your team's been doing, you know, a couple of years in stealth, but, you know, really accelerating from, uh, you know, the announcement coming out of stealth uh, at the end of 2019 to just about half a year, your GA with a major OEM of HPE, you know, definitely a lot of work that needs to be done. Bring us, you know, what, what are you most proud about from uh, the, the work that your team's doing? Uh, I, you know, I, we don't need to hear any, you know, major horror stories, but, you know, there always are some of those, you know, knot holes or challenges that, uh, you know, often get, you know, hidden behind the curtain. I mean, personally, I'm most proud of the team that we built. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously, you know, uh, our executives have a good track record of, you know, disrupting the market multiple times, but I'm most proud of the team because the team is not just worried about technology, uh, that uh, uh, I mean, there are very senior technologists and they're great leaders, but they're also worried about a customer problem, um, right? So it's always about you know getting the right mix of you know execution combined with technology is when you succeed. Uh, that is what I'm I mean, I mean most proud of. You know we have a team with independent leaders running all these projects independently, 
um, and then releasing almost, we have a release every week, if you look at all our customers, right? And then, you know, being a small company, doing that is, uh, <clears throat> is pretty challenging in, in a way, but we did, met, we came up with methodologies where we fully believe in automation, everything is automated. And whenever we release uh, software, we run through the full set of automation so that we are confident that customer is getting good quality code. Uh, it's not like, you know, we cooked up something and that they should be worried when they need to upgrade to this software. So that's, I think that's the key part. Uh, if you want to succeed in this day and age, uh, uh, developing the features at the velocity that you would want to develop and still support all these customers at the same time. Absolutely. Well, congratulations on that, Christian. All right, final question I have for you. Give us a little bit of guidance going forward. You know, often when we see a company out and we, you know, try to say, oh, well, this is what that company does. You've got a very flexible architecture, a lot of different types of solutions. What kind of markets or services, you know, might we be looking at uh, from Pensando, uh, you know, down the, down the road a little bit ways? So I think we have a long journey ahead. So we have a platform right now. We already, uh, I mean, we have a varied way. We, we are shipping, um, uh, the platform is already shipping in, in a storage provider. Uh, we are integrating with uh, premier clouds, public clouds, and, you know, enterprise market, you know, we already deployed uh, distributed firewall. Some of our customers deployed distributed firewall. So, you know, uh, so if you take this platform, it can be extendable to add, you know, all the services that you see in, in data centers or in clouds, right? But primarily we are driven from a customer perspective and customer priority point of view. Um, so where we will go is we will try to add more edge services. We'll try to add more storage features. Uh, and then we, we are also this initial interest in service provider market, what we can do for 5G and IoT, uh, because we have the flexible platform. We have to see, you know, how to apply this platform to these new applications. That's where probably we'll go in future. Right, well, Krishna Dodapeni, Vice President of Software with Pensando, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Stu, it was great talking to you. All right, be sure to check out thecube.net. You can find lots of interviews from Pensando. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching The Cube. Mm -hmm.